Hello, Next Community. I wanted to show you, okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and cast from that system, uh, the NRW system, over to my Mac Mini, and we're gonna let that load up here. And then we're also gonna have to interface with the web. So while that's booting up, I'm gonna go ahead and run this little video that'll get Hello, things synced. I wanted to show you one of my early, early flash animation projects for my website, Black Hole Incorporated. Uh, this would have been around the year 2000. And at that time, there was still a lot of dial-up computers. And I, this may have even been from a couple of years before that. So I would get customers call up, I tried to watch your, you know, uh, video, but my system was freezing up. It took a while for it to download everything. So I think I had 270 moving objects in this particular animation which was very uncommon for the day. And of course, you know, if you're dialing up and it's, you know, 28.8 baud, uh, things are basically a crawl. But I kind of anticipated that, hey, maybe the web would be faster. And I was trying to get people at that time to accept that if you go to a cable modem, it seems to play just fine, right? And, you know, a lot of people were insisted on having dial-ups. So I was like, well, you also don't need an extra phone line. So as a result, I was just uh, throwing everything I could at it to try and break the internet, as you can see. So I designed, you know, did all the artwork here and added in all these little animations. And Flash was pretty fun for doing this. And so I was just trying to see, uh, you know, what I could do with it all. And this is kind of the result, it's kind of, uh, a look into my mind, you know, of, uh, of uh, the black hole and next products and the World Wide Web and just seeing what the web was capable of at the time. And because Flash, you can't really play Flash animations without this special product called Ruffle. So I was happy to see that they had this stored on the Wayback Machine and I was uh, able to play this little animation. And uh, so there you have it. I thought you all would enjoy uh, seeing you know, what I was doing back then to promote the Black Hole website. Years ahead of <laughs> everything else on the market, I suppose. Have a good day. I'll try to pick a nice stopping point. Cool stuff, huh? Okay, so for part two, we need to sync up. Here I go. Okay, so this is being cast from the NRW. Who are you gonna call? Over to the back oh, mini here. Buster. How's that? Pretty cool, huh? My video techniques are getting awesome. Whee! So this is uh, going to MIT <laughs> Media Labs. Uh, tell me that. I'm definitely uh, opening something up. I'm not sure what, man. Look out. So we oh, see God. that's working. <laughs> and with any luck, oh, man, um, I, what I timed this time. because we actually need lightning. Hey. So I'm going to spin around here yeah. and see if we can't catch a uh, real-time lightning strike. Uh, before we uh, get to the next part here. Dimension for sure. What do you guys think? Hold on. See if we can get it. Okay. Yeah. If I disappear, you know why? Right. Okay. So, I need to get out the back door here. Oh, my gosh. Uh, as you all know, I have a fractured hip that I'm getting around on here. So I just need to move a couple things out of the way. Bear with me. And, uh, 
Uh, oh my gosh. So we're gonna go, and with any luck, we're gonna get a, some lightning here. I hear a little thunder. Oh, oh my gosh. All we need is one good one. Let's go ahead and open the door. And this is the first uh, lightning storm of the year. Hello. I'm in uh, Fort Collins, Colorado. So the rain's much needed. And with any luck, we'll get a lightning strike somewhere. It's building up a charge. Come on. Okay. As soon as I go in, watch, bam. <laughs> All right, so we'll get back to the project here. <clears throat> yep, I hear thunder now. Okay. All right. Oh. Uh. Oh gosh. Okay. Uh. Okay, now with any luck, oh, all right, bear with me, I'm not moving the way I used to. Okay, so we've got, got it casting and you can kind of see the overlap, right? So let's click in here. Okay, now I need you guys to get ready too. Yep, that's working. So now, what we're gonna do, uh, I need to log out of this real quick, so bear with me just one second. Okay. And we need to bring this back. So if everything's worked okay, I need you to go to this website address. InfiniteMac.org. Why my phone is not uh, focusing, I'm not sure. Okay, InfiniteMac.org. So that's I-N-F-I-N-I-T-E-M-A-C dot org. And we're going to run through the different, uh, let's see, we'll go to 1995. And we're going to click run, okay? And uh, with any luck, it should show you this particular re release. will show you the uh, NRW special software for Next Step. And it may just uh, take a second here. Now, I also wanted to show you another project I'm working on. And this has to do with the uh, Powerball statistics, okay? And so what I've done here is I've made a uh, statistical chart of all the drawings. And I've converted it to where now I can do... Uh, code encryption, and as well as uh, what would happen if I converted the numbers to letters. So I've got f four different methods. The first one is Oxford, okay? So where A is 1, B is 2, C is 3. Um, <clears throat> the, the second set is, you know, the alphabet, A through Z, 1 through 26, 
so the, the, the first one is actually Oxford, and that was the most common letters used in the English language. Um, the third one was the uh, ETA, that was uh, the most common letters used in the U.S., and the fourth one was um, uh, basically using the Webster's Dictionary. So the most common letters using all the words. Now, as you can see, there's kind of words that'll show up here. Let's see if we can find a good one, just looking through here. So this is kind of like one of those word find. For example, I'm seeing gump come up a lot, which is, so that's, uh, you know, the four different methods going this way. What's interesting is it also appears this way. And I think like Bubba Gump Shrimp, right? <laughs> Forrest Gump, um, and it's interesting because it'll go diagonal, it'll go up and down, and you know here you can see uh, G O O L F, so you can kind of mo move letters as well, right? Uh, you can see how cup his doctor. I think the, the Powerball may be telling me I need a doctor for doing all this, but it's something I've been kind of doing for fun for about uh, 20 to 30 years. And I've actually uh, predicted four or five numbers on the cash five 23 times. And I feel like I was called up into the uh, statistics uh, for the Powerball a while back. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. And I figured if there was going to be any way, you know, I may win a uh, something like a Nobel Prize for physics. But I think what I've discovered here is the future may actually be sending us messages back through Powerball drawings. Okay. So it's kind of a game within a game. And uh, there's several possibilities here. Is it, uh, is it aliens? Is it time travelers from the future? Is it the mob? <laughs> <laughs> or is it just uh, plain crazy? But uh, I don't think I'm crazy. And so I've got it over here. So say you pick a number, and I just figured out, instead of doing V lookup, I could do uh, index and match, which allows me to add further columns in. So I'm going to go ahead and add, you know, all of the different, you know, A through Z columns. So I'll see if stuff actually comes up. So here, you can see I put a one in, right? So if we change that to zero, which means no hits on that number the next game, you'll see stuff actually changes, right? And uh, here's where it gets interesting. So if we go down here to say number 38, okay, you'll see that we've got, you know, 10 gump or whatever. So if I put a one in, it, it, you know, for tonight's drawing, which is like a billion dollars, and we'll see if anything changes. Ah, okay. So if, uh, say, 38 were to hit tonight or the next couple drawings, things start to align. And I got to thinking, well, maybe these are little hints towards the next drawing. And, you know, you kind of got the word, crossword, scratch games, and that type of thing. So, at any rate, um, now, I've got, you know, 23 different spreadsheets here, right? I, have, I haven't shown it, you know, the, the world this yet. So, this is the actual words that come out in, in drawings, okay? So, the first set, I, I have the draw number orders, right? So you can see beta, it's in beta test. That's actually the way it's coming out of the machine. And uh, it's interesting to see how many times words will line up. So you're kind of trying to guess what maybe the next letter is in some cases. So you can see uh, use here, um, Ruth, like Babe Ruth. And you know, his number was three, for example. And here's Ty. Um, Ace, Labs, all kinds of stuff appears in here. And it's really kind of neat. It, it, it makes it a little fun for me. And I don't spend a whole lot. 
because, you know, if I'm going to take them down, I just want to spend, I think my maximum budget is $6 per drawing, which is three tickets. And, you know, sometimes, I, you know, I won't play at all. And instead of doing the uh, Powerball, which is, uh, or, or, you know, the quick pick, why not uh, have a little fun and put my numbers in, you know, based on uh, a crazy graph? And they are well aware of this. I, uh, in fact, sent them uh, this quite a while back. And it turns out that the guy that was running, um, oh, there's Jobs. Look at there, Steve Jobs. Maybe it's Steve Jobs in the afterlife contacting us. <laughs> if anybody was going to be trying to dig on the universe, it'd be Steve. So at any rate, uh, that's kind of my power. I call it the Powerball decoder, and I have put it out on the web. So you guys can kind of, I, I want to make it so it's automated, so we everybody can play around with it. And hopefully we'll have a big winner. If not, it's just kind of cool. Uh, maybe it's a Ouija board. You know, maybe it's people from the afterlife. Uh, but it's all based on statistics and actual uh, drawing numbers. Now, here is that NRW uh, Next Step up and running in the browser. As you can see, if you know Next Step, things are a little different. So there you have it. Time travels real. And have a great day. Once more, a shout out to uh, Brian and Dave and Jills for letting me experiment on uh, the system going to MIT. Enjoy. Oh, uh, to show how detailed, you know, my, uh, my chart is back here for Powerball, I've, I've done everything here. So there's my V lookup tables, which now I can do index and match, which take, takes up a lot less space. I've got, you know, the mean, median mode, standard deviation. And it's weird because these stats actually exhibit nearly a perfect bell curve. And if it's supposed to be random, how does that happen? I noticed also, like in the old McDonald's game, it seems like uh, two members of the same family, one within, you know, say... Uh, what was it, 16 months? I find that a little unusual statistically. Uh, same six numbers came up in one drawing. And the second time, uh, there were winners. Um, a lot of winners, uh, you know, if you look at the stats, I, I don't know. 90% of the uh, uh, lottery uh, draw machines are made by Smart Play in New Jersey, New Brunswick, and so, uh, and some of them are kind of interesting, like the uh, ocean, they call themselves the Ocean 16 in New Jersey. And one of the gals, uh, dad was a senator, uh, and he had passed away quite a few years ago, but they called him the, uh, the father of the lottery. And I found it interesting that she won big. So maybe, uh, you know, relatives do help and there are angels and, you know, Whatever you want to believe, or you can just do a quick pick or not play at all, but uh, this kind of makes it fun for me. Uh, so this shows odds and evens, you know, numbers coming up, what happens. Sometimes you'll get four or five draws in a row or ten where, you know, an even will come up in the third position. Um, and then I've got, you know, the gaps. I look at the gaps between the numbers. And here's more odd even, you know, based on different uh, criteria, different sorting, different numbers. And when you sort these two, st stuff comes up in a lines. So, as I say, I've spent about maybe 30 years doing this, and it's it's fun for me. So I've got all these different stats. And, uh, well, enjoy. And uh, above all, have a happy April Fool's Day. And uh, some of this stuff is real. So uh, some of it is uh, fictitious and to have a little fun with you guys. Have a good day. Peace. Best regards, Rob Lesson. Oh, let's go back to uh, let's go back to the index match and see if we can find one more one more. So you can see I break it down into detail. And this is all legitimate stats, right? So in this case, this is the second ball that comes out of the machine and what happens there. And at times it gets really interesting because all kinds of stuff lines up. Okay. Like here, I see soup. I see uh, tax. 
I see Gap, <laughs> Curl, you know, so all this stuff, maybe you know, Fink, uh, so maybe Rat Fink or something, Web, as I say, you know, and, and you can kind of rearrange things too, like, you know, there'll be four or five letters and then you move one from below, so it's kind of like playing Scrabble, I guess, and uh, so there you have it, have a good day. And, uh, you know, good luck. I hope somebody out there wins. Can you see win? <laughs>